Thanks, Hubert, so much. Appreciate it. And uh, <clears throat> happy Thanksgiving and Black Friday. And uh, you guys are with a really good, good crew here. This is a really tight team that they put together for this presentation. So all the guys are my friends here. We were all in Vegas, with the exception, I think, Larry, which unfortunately wasn't there. But uh, really good crew. Great presentation from Rob. Take him up on that live trading event. I will be there. Um, you guys really want to be there. Um, you know, we try to deal with guys who are trading live, and I'm kind of laughing talking about a choppy day. So <clears throat> these are all my positions right now, and I was I was hoping my P and L would stick. I was actually down a dollar, but it went down to down forty nine dollars. So <laughs> along keeping the spirit of trading live, um, so I'm kind of going back and forth between uh, profitability and not over a bunch of positions. And Hubert, you're short gold, and you like gold lower. I actually have GDX on, uh, on the short side, which, where is my position there? GDX. I have a 2119 put spread in GDX, so I'm hoping Hubert is right. Up a little bit of money on that, down a little bit today, but uh, <clears throat> hoping Hubert's right. So, um, guys, uh, welcome. We'll have a little bit of fun here. This is a really nice event. As I said, they got a, a good team, a tight team. Um, you guys are in for a, a nice treat here today. And uh, again, thanks to Rob for the kind words. We're all good friends and we uh, only work with people who are reputable and work hard and enjoy this business and really try to help others. So um, again, hope you guys had a nice Thanksgiving. I had a little bit too much turkey last night, so it's good. It'll be fun. Uh, we'll talk about FIB. Uh, I'll try to fit in some uh, some live examples. I got a lot of content for you. Um, go ahead and throw questions in along the way. I'll try to answer ones that are relevant to the current slide. If not, I'm just going to push on just in the interest of uh, time. We've got a lot of good content here. Now, let me just get my questions out. Make sure we're good there. Where did my questions go? View. Huh. Questions are hiding on me. Staff. Interesting. Hubert, am I, oh, can, can you make me an org, Hubert, by chance, so I can see those questions? Just go ahead and do that along the way if you don't mind. Yep, doing it, doing it right now, bro. I, I just did it for him. Thanks, appreciate it. Uh, I am, what, what size, those are 34s. And actually, I have an updated, um, I think I have an updated. Somebody asked me what size screens those are. Those are 34s, and they're curved. And it was really fun at first, but then when I realized the whole world, including you guys, has 19 by 20 traditional monitors, I had to put a fourth monitor above. So I think I have a pick. Oh, I do right here. So I just redid my office, and I put a fourth monitor above just for webinars in a traditional ratio that you guys all see. Otherwise, the presentation and charts would all look very skewed. So I kind of like to have some fun with tech, like uh, like Hubert Hubert's office is uh, is uh, you know right out of Tech Week uh, magazine. So, um, anyways, we'll have some fun here, guys. We'll talk about Fib. Uh, hopefully, dispel some myths. Uh, just so I get an idea, how many of you guys are using Fib right now? Yes, no. I know enough to be dangerous. I think it's voodoo. I think it's evil. Uh, let me just get a feel for the room, and we have a lot of people in here. Big no. Big no, and oh my God, it's going so fast. Okay, I'm seeing about 61.8% of the room is using FIB and 38.2% is not. So, all right, that's good. <laughs> all right, we'll have some fun. Um, hopefully the munchkins, they're old enough, well, they won't come down and uh, they, I got two boys, uh, two and a half year old twin boys, are almost three, they can come down the stairs now into my office. So I told the wife to keep them away and this is actually me doing a webinar where the kid jumps up on my little balance board that I use at my stand-up desk to do this. So if you hear any munchkins in the background, please excuse me. We are going to be trading live. Um, as I mentioned, Rob mentioned, we all, you know, we like to sling it a little bit. Um, we, we make money, we lose money. This is no get rich quick. This is for people who like to work hard. Um, I equate trading to a boxing match. You're going to give some shots, you're going to get some shots, you're going to wind up in your butt. But if you love this game and you want to work hard, you get off that mat and you keep fighting to the bell and you try to win the decision at the end of 12 rounds. That's, that's the way trading is. As Rob mentioned, you know, he's had ups, he's had downs, he's always working to become a better trader, and that is the reality of this business. This is only for people who want to work hard and enjoy this and are willing to go through the ups and downs. Okay? 
We are not promising you know the keys to the kingdom here. This is this you only get rewarded with with hard work. So talking about indicators and and you know Rob has a very unique way of using indicators. For me, they just don't gel. For me, I, I started out using a bunch of indicators, and perhaps it was because I was using too many. When I first started trading, right, right in college, in fact, I hardly ever went to class. Um, I, was a, I was a Division I ski racer in college. Uh, I was more interested in skiing and barding and chasing girls and hardly ever went to class. I traded out of my dorm, and I was reading Alexander Elder's book, Trading for a Living, that red one, if you remember. And it would introduce you to indicator after indicator after indicator, and eventually my charts got so wound up with indicators I could barely even see price action. So I was trying to trade, and then I, I took my first job out of college in San Diego as a prop trader, and it just got to be I had so many indicators on my chart, like I could barely even see price, and I didn't know which indicator to follow. Each one was firing off a different signal at a different time, and I eventually got to the point of paralysis by analysis. So I had it to I had to devolve and go through indicator evolution. So I started to eliminate that which doesn't work. Now, fast forward, um, I guess I started trading when I was 18. I was professional. I was 22. I'm 37. So I guess I've been trading in the professional markets for 15 years. You know, I've been involved in the markets. That's all I've ever done is involved in the trading markets. Fast forward, and this is what my charts look like now. No indicators. Um, I use a, a couple little leading indicator methodologies like FIB, and I try to identify areas of support resistance ahead of time around which we want to execute trades with a plan. So I try to, I try to eliminate the, the excess and get down to the minimum effective dose. And the way I like to equate this is we have twin boys now. So you guys know when you have kids, like, it introduces a whole new realm of germs in the house that you never knew existed. So when the kids start to get sick, you know, the whole house comes down. So I just want to like whack them with a bunch of that cough medicine or whatever my wife gives them, like give them like the whole bottle, knock it out, and we don't have to deal with it for the rest of the, the winter. Well, obviously, you know that's not good because there's a recommended dosage and it's going to hurt the little guy. So you've got to use the recommended dose enough to be effective, but any, mo any more than that, it becomes dangerous. So I kind of feel that way with all the indicators and the methodologies and stuff like that. Keep it simple and find something that works for you. You guys are being presented with a lot of different options here today. You've got to find something that works for you and stick with it. Okay, so these are the kind of trades we like to initiate. If you don't believe me that you can't actually, that you can trade without indicators, let's just kind of take a look at this. This is a typical setup that I will be able to teach you here today inside of this hour. You move down into the FIB support zone, which I'll teach you. You buy the breakout above the bar that tests the FIB zone. Okay? Typical entry, no you know, hindsight, this is, this is not a difficult entry to get, it would be 104 bucks. I'm going to pick on MACD, which is moving average convergence divergence with the 12.26.9 standard settings. The black crosses above the red, that is your traditional entry. That's going to get you in about 108 bucks, okay? So you're giving up four dollars on the entry by using one of these lagging indicators. Four dollars is huge. Like for 100 shares, it's 400 bucks. For 1,000 shares, that's 4,000 dollars. And I can't even do the do the math if you're trading the NQ futures. In fact, by the time a MACD trader is getting in, I'm probably beginning to take profits. Right, so my approach to the markets is they're competitive. There's a lot of people involved. Um, a lot of people are being pushed out of work, and a lot of people are, are trying to trade for a living. Um, there's a lot of algos and HFTs and hedge funds and market makers and private traders and investment banks who are all competing for your account dollars. So it's my opinion you got to find something that's going to get you in early and out early to stay competitive. The days of buying a breakout above the highs. You know, that was 1998 trading AOL and, and Corning. You've got to be in the market earlier and out of the market earlier. It's a more competitive marketplace. So I don't have the speakers set up correctly, but um, this is a, uh, a time on CNBC. Oil is about 42, and I made a big call, and I did a whole video about it. I submitted a piece to CNBC. I wrote an article to customers. I said, guys, we're at 42 oil. We're going to stop at 26. So I, CNBC brought me back, and they're like, well, basically, Todd, you called the exact low in crude. 
the low wound up being $26.05. And Brian Sullivan comes back and goes, well, Todd, you missed it by five cents. Why were you off by so much? It was kind of fun. The article went viral. It was the number one article on CNBC.com, Yahoo Finance. Like, I got a bunch of text messages and Facebook messages. The funniest one was like, a buddy I haven't heard from in 20 years since high school is like, Todd, I saw you on Yahoo. I didn't know you're a stockbroker now. <laughs> I'm like, no, not really, but okay. So it was pretty fun. My site blew up. And I got a lot, of, a lot of hits and attention from the guy who called the loan oil. All it was, guys, was a simple fib projection. Okay, just a simple fit projection that you could learn inside of 30 seconds. So we did a move off of the credit crisis low, reaction back to the real estate, down to $26. This was the chart I sent out to customers. Like, no big deal. You guys can do this in 30 seconds. That was the low and crude. Everybody's tripping over themselves trying to figure out supply and demand, where OPEC's going to be, where the dollar's going to be, blah, blah, blah. Just a simple fit projection. That's all it was. So we're going to try to simplify FIB here a little bit kind of tie it into an actionable game plan that you can start trading with maybe today. We only have about what, two, three hours left in the session. Um, one of the core themes that you're going to hear in my presentation is we got to think like a market maker, not a market taker. You need to anticipate price action rather than react to price action. That's what's going to give you the edge. I'm going to show you how to pinpoint FIB support and resistance zones. This is the key. This is the meat. This is what you're looking for. And also I'm going to show you a brand new indicator Okay, that I've been working on for about a year that's going to help fortify these zones. And at the end, as Rob mentioned, he had nothing to present to you. I am proud to tell you I do have an offer for you at the end, and it's a course that I've worked on for a year. It's uh, something that the reviews have come in, and they've been astounding. I do have something to offer you on Black Friday, and I'm very proud to put it in front of you, and I hope you take advantage of it. But this isn't going to be a sales presentation. I have a lot of content to put in front of you, and you will pick up something from this, if not multiple things you can incorporate into your trade. So here we go. Um, I'm going to skip this real quick. Uh, I am Todd Gordon. Just uh, real fast, I was a uh, I left Wall Street in 2010. Prior to that, I traded uh, right out of college. I uh, met my wife Trish. I uh, knew she was uh, she was one of the good ones, and I was going to marry her. Uh, Jake and Brody came into our lives, and I just wanted to be around when they grew up not working at a hedge fund or an investment bank or something like that, so just kind of enjoy life and, and uh, trade at home. Uh, so he was at my reception. The only reason I bring this up is because this is my best man, Jeff, reading the best man speech. And Jeff and I were no saints growing up. I mean, we caused a lot of trouble. And he just completely ripped me right across the coals. And Trump and Melania were in the corner, and I could see Trump just shaking his head like, oh, my God, who is this guy? So I'm a little afraid Trump is going to take a hard line about, against like deporting people who are lawbreakers and not good people. I just hope I'm not on that list. Um, I do CBC. You guys may have seen me. No big deal. Um, I actually have my third three-year contract with NBC sitting on my desk right over there that I got to sign when I'm done. Uh, and then I run the business at home. I love running this business. This is what all I've really ever wanted to do was, was run a trading business, trade my own money, help people like you. Like I really enjoy doing this stuff. We were, the whole team was just out in Vegas at the Traders Expo. Really enjoy the social aspect. We have a great team. I really enjoy doing this. I can trade well. Um, I have you know, up months. I have down months. But I can help people trade just like all the other guys that you are listening here to today. And uh, hopefully I build a business big enough to hand it over to Jake and Brody. So that's, that's my game plan. Maybe at 37, maybe it's a little premature to say I've arrived, but I'm very happy with, with, the way, with, the way, with where we are right now. So we're going to talk about anticipating. You know, that's the core theme that I mentioned. We want to anticipate trades rather than react. Tony Robbins says that's the ultimate power. Losers react, leaders anticipate. So this market maker versus market taker concept. If you're reacting to the market, you are being put on your back heels in a position of weakness. There's very few good trading opportunities exist where you can just simply follow the crowd in. Most of the good trading opportunities require you to step ahead of the crowd. Anticipating trades puts you in a position of strength. So what I mean by that is this is a typical FIB entry that I can teach you today. Okay, You're going to get in about 740 bucks here on Amazon. If you take the MACD entry, and I'm picking on MACD today, 
you take the MACD entry, you're going to be in about 748. So you have an $8 difference between the FIB entry and the indicator entry. Not when, or excuse me, not if, but when the market comes back and retests you, just think about the position you're going to be in. If you're long from the FIB zone with a tight stop just below, the market comes back and retests you like, okay, I was up some money, they're coming back to retest me, I'm down a couple bucks in the trade, not a big deal. You're not likely to eject from the trade and make a bad decision before the market rips. If you're up here and the market comes back and retests you, that's when you start getting sweaty and nervous and anxious and you might make a bad decision down here, stop yourself out before support is broken, only to watch the market rally higher. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of dealing from a position of strength. You've got to get in the market earlier. When you get in the market earlier, you have inherently tighter stops. Your average stop loss size will go down and you have options. You're dealing from a position of strength. This right here is the quickest way to become a better trader, right here. Okay? I'll make the point later, but I'm on kind of a roll right now, so I'll keep going. The winning side of a trade, staying with a winner longer, rolling out option positions, that takes years and years of practice. But you can learn to become a better trader by improving your entries and getting longer, closer to support, and shorter, closer to resistance. Okay, so FIB. There's a lot of subjectivity out there. You know, where do you start and stop this FIB? You know, which one of these 4,000 ratios on your chart is actually going to help? All the different tools are confusing. I mean, how many of you are thinking that right now? And I want to see some answers in that text box. If you're thinking that, I would say I totally agree with you. We need to simplify and package it into a way that makes it um, a little bit more approachable, that we can package into a trade plan. Okay? So I know how to use FIB. I can do it in my sleep. Um, in fact, one time my wife actually woke up, like this is about five years ago. She's like, Todd, I had a dream about Fibonacci. And she's not a trader at all. She's like, I dreamt about Fibonacci. And I actually did a YouTube vlog about it. But um, anyways, so it's just kind of a way of life here at the Gordon household. So I set out a way to find it, find a way to make it simple, simple, package it, and I can teach it to you in a step-by-step -step manner. So that's been my mission over the last year, and that's what I'm presenting to you today. So Back in the 13th century or 14th century, whenever Leonardo Fibonacci de Pisa was, was in existence, he handed down the Fibonacci trading scroll. And this is on display in the Louvre in Paris. Totally kidding. Um, this is a six-step trade plan uh, with Fib that I'm going to teach you right now. But first, before we dive in, we've got to talk about swing waves. Okay? And let me just bring up a chart here real quick. All right. I'm getting this on my fourth monitor, which is always a little tricky. Okay, a swing wave is a high bar with a lower high to the left and a lower high to the right. This right here is a swing wave high. Let me zoom in just a touch. A swing wave low is a low bar with a higher low to the left and a higher low to the right. It's just a short-term change in trend. When that higher low is not exceeded in the five bars before and the five following, it's called a minor swing, and it's given a purple dot. When it's not exceeded in 13 bars before and after, it's a major wave and given a blue dot. So here's the minor. Okay, you got a high bar with a lower high to the left and a lower high to the right. The indicator I've got built for you paints a purple dot on it. If this is not exceeded five bars before and the five bars following, you don't know you have a minor swing wave high until that fifth bar closes and the sixth bar opens up. It can be candles or open high low close bar, it doesn't matter. If you have a higher low in the market that's not exceeded in the 13 bars before, 13 bars following, this is a significant trend change and it's given a blue dot. That's a major swing wave low. This is a big time lagging indicator and it's done so um, by design. It's done on purpose. This is going to help you trade, and I'll, I'll, pull, I'll piece this together for you. So we know what these purple and blue dots do. The purple or the magenta or whatever they are, the pink, whatever you want to call them, those are the minor swing wave highs and lows. The blue dots are your major swing wave highs and lows. They're a visual aid to help you pick out the most significant turning points and secondary turning points in the market. Step number two on the Fibonacci scroll is we want to identify the trend. 
And I use a very simple uh, indicator called the DMI oscillator. It's available on every major charting package. I bump up the defaults from uh, 10, 12, I think the DMI uh, defaults to, I go up to 55. Um, I like to have a longer, smoothed out trending market. I like to participate in kind of bigger moves. Um, I'm not a day trader. I'm not a short-term trader like Rob. You know, Rob's in there just, you know, beating up the markets every day. Hubert's a scalper. Hubert does, yeah, not so much, but Hubert position trades a little bit too. Like, I'm a swing trader. I like to hold positions and option trades for, you know, a week or two weeks at a time. So I kind of bump up the defaults to 55. And the DMI oscillator, what this does is if you have a blue indicator or blue oscillator above the zero line, you're in an uptrend. If you have a red oscillator below, you're in a downtrend. Just real simple. The strategy I'm going to teach you today is a trend trading strategy. 80 to 90% of the trades that you do should be in the direction of the trend, which means in the direction of the oscillator of the time frame that you're trading. We're looking at Chevron on a one hour chart here. Okay? Which means 10 to 20% of your trade should be counter trend trades, and we'll talk about that later. Okay, I kind of skipped ahead, but oscillator is red, you're in a downtrend, it's blue in an uptrend, no problem. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead of this, no big deal. Okay. Um, good question there, Claude. After hours, for futures, do I use after hours charts? For futures markets, I do. Gold, S&P futures, bond futures, stuff like that. I use 24-hour charts, but for stocks, I don't. I don't. Good question. Okay, um, so... Let's start finding trend swings. Okay, this is Google on a 60 minute chart. We have a blue oscillator, it's in an uptrend. The first step to find trend waves are you wanna, you wanna first find the direction of the market and then you wanna find the most recent blue dot low. Okay, there's your first major swing wave low in an uptrend. You then wanna just find the highest price following that blue dot low. Now this has a purple dot, which means we're five bar, we're clear five bars to the right, five bars to the left. We don't have 13 bars yet because when we go to that 14th bar, it will go to blue. This right here is your most, um, this right here is your most recent and relevant trend swing. Okay, this is what you want to start focusing on as we approach Fib. Okay, in a downtrend, Google 60 minute red oscillator. You're looking for blue dot high to blue dot low when you have a red oscillator. Blue dot high to blue dot low. So though the trend of Google on the 60 minute is down, there's two distinct trend swings, high to low and high to low. You are going to use these trend swings to start and stop your FIB analysis later on. You can also identify the most recent corrective waves. So we have a blue oscillator situation, we're in an uptrend. Any blue dot high to blue dot low, those are counter trend corrections. Blue dot high to blue dot low. This was a blue dot high to blue dot low, but then we were exceeded. We made a new blue dot low. So this is your trend. This is your corrective swing. This is your corrective swing. You will use these corrective waves for FIB calculations later on. So this is a very quick and easy way to find the most important trend swings, blue dot low to blue dot high, and then corrective waves, blue dot high to blue dot low when you're in an uptrend. Okay, so same situation, Google on the 60 minute again, blue dot low to blue dot high in a downtrend is your corrective rally. Blue dot low to blue dot high, a corrective rally. Okay, these are studies, or these are trend swings you're gonna look at um, later on to base your FIB calculations. So like 20 minutes into the presentation, we finally get to FIB, okay? A lot of people will say, well, Fibonacci retracements, which I'm sure you've all heard of, they're like, yeah, they don't work. Because like, people are just haphazardly throwing them up on a chart. Like, I don't expect them to work. We're putting too much stress on Fib retracements. So the proper way to draw Fib is, number one, what's the trend of the market? It's up. Oscillator's up. You're going to find the most recent blue dot low. You're going to find the highest price. And if we've turned into a blue dot, and we've got 13 bars off the top, perfect. That's great. This is the most recent and relevant trend swing that you want to use to base your fib retracements, right? High to low. Fib retracements are going to try to identify one of these fib retracements that will capture the end of the correction ahead of the next trend wave unfolding. You always want to anticipate 
almost always anticipate that the trend is going to resume. And being that you have a blue dot low to blue dot high, you have an uptrend. You're going to try to get as long as you can, as close as you can to support. That is going to ensure that you have the smallest stop losses, and that's how you become a better trader from my perspective. So if this is a $10 move, a $5 drop will get you to a 50% retracement. A $6 drop will get you to a 61% retracement. These are the key retracements we use. Now, you can't trade, in my opinion, just on FIB retracements. You need to fortify the zone. So before we dive in, let me just check my time. OK. We have a blue dot. OK, let me just start from the beginning. Uptrend, blue oscillator, we're good. This is Amazon on a one hour. You're going to look for the most recent blue dot low, and there she is. You're going to extend right up to the highest price. We have a purple dot. We don't have 13 bars off the top. Looks like it's like 10, 11, something like that. We're close. This is the trend swing you're going to use to calculate your fib retracements. So on Thicker Swim, you go down to retracements. You click the low on the uptrend first, and then you go up to the highest price. That is the absolute correct way to draw fib retracements. Okay. Um, let me do this quick. All right. Let's just do some live charts real quick. Uh, NASDAQ, we are, ooh, we just got a green oscillator there. It's pretty choppy, but we are actually in an uptrend. So this is the NDX on the 60 minute. Where's our blue dot low? Right there. Where's our blue dot high? Right there. We got 13 bars off the top. So you go drawings, fib retracements. You go from the low up to the high. That is the correct way to draw it. Uh, give me other symbols. IWM, Randy, sure. Throw a couple at me. Um, IWM, <laughs> here is one weakness of, of my style of trading. When it's just a straight one-way shot with no pullbacks, I don't usually participate. We leave a lot of money. But for me, buying breakouts, there's nowhere to contain risk. So you'll have to go all the way down here in IWM to the blue dot low. This kind of market, I have a really hard time trading. Because it's just a one-way straight shot with no pullbacks. You can make money, but there's nowhere to contain risk. TLT. Okay. So this is interesting. This, let, me, let me just do this real quick, and I'm going to push on. Obviously, we're in oscillator downtrend. Blue dot high right there, down to the low. Now, here's a quick opportunity. This is called stacking the zone. This is the first strategy I'll teach you. Blue dot high down to the low, and you can stack the zone of the retracements, find a up, find the prior blue dot high, which is up here. And here's where you start fortifying the zone. And you start looking for areas of resistance. Guys, this is what I'm talking about. I want you shorting here. And I want you to have a tight stop. If you get stopped out, so be it. I want you to risk 30 cents on this trade. And you can make a dollar or two. If you get stopped out, so what? If you make a dollar, well done. You should be shorting at resistance and buying at support. That's what I'm talking about. Um, Chandra, I'll show you how to get the indicator. It's a plug-in. It's not available on TD. I'll give you the plug-in. Yep, no problem. Okay, so that's retracements. Okay, now here's where the good stuff starts to come in. And let me just make sure. Are we? We're dealing on our blocks, right? I believe we are. I just want to make sure. Okay. This is the good stuff. All that stuff was basic. When you, just to recap, we just compared trend swing to corrective swing with retracements. Now we're going to go to a tool called Fibonacci projections. You're going to study a prior corrective wave to figure out where this corrective wave is going to go. So we did a retracement to study this trend wave to figure out where this ongoing corrective wave will stop. We're going to fortify the zone by finding a prior corrective wave and compare it to the ongoing corrective wave. So FIB projections study a prior correction and project the zone that a future ongoing corrective wave could occupy. These are your FIB retracement or these are your FIB projections. Okay. So this is S and P ES on the 15-minute chart. We're in an oscillator downtrend. We're going to find all blue dot lows to highs, okay? Because we're in a downtrend. If you're in an uptrend, you want to find blue dot high to low. Obviously, these are the counter trend swings in an uptrend. 
every blue dot low to high is a counter trend swing against the established trend. Blue dot low to blue dot high. This is a purple dot low to blue dot high, purple dot to purple dot, purple dot to blue dot. So there's a lot of corrections on this chart, but the two most important ones are blue dot low to blue dot high. This is not rocket science, but it's a good visual aid just to quickly point out the most important corrections. So the way you study those on TOS is you hit drawings, you get on the FIB extensions, and this is where confusion comes in. Th uh, thinkorswim, I believe TradeStation, eSignal, a lot of the charting companies incorrectly label FIB extensions. They're not extensions. They're actually FIB projections, and it causes confusion. They're act and I'm going to refer to them as projections because that's their correct name, but just don't let that trip you up. So the way you do this is you hit the FIB extensions, which you now know are projections, and it's a three-click process. You're going to click the beginning of the prior cor corrective wave first. You're going to click the end of the prior corrective wave a second time, and then you're going to click the beginning of the ongoing corrective wave a third time. And I'll show you exactly what that means. Okay. Uh, we'll do some live charts. So we just did this correction, and basically what you're doing is you're just taking the distance traveled here and projecting it off this low. The 100%, that's what you call a measured move or symmetry or AB equals CD or a two-step pattern. Like there's a lot of different um, names for it. 100% didn't hold. We got some chop around there, but ultimately went up to the 161% and the 200%, and that so far has been the top. So I'm going to leave these red retracement or these red projections up, and I'm going to go back. Now let's get this guy's opinion, blue dot to blue dot. That distance right there is going to be exactly equal to this 0% on the blue up to the 100%. Okay, that's what you call a measured move right there. 2141 to 2153. Okay, we've got a 12-point move in the, in the futures. Right, so that is how we start stacking the zone. We get this guy's opinion, we get this guy's opinion, and we start to build out a zone. And don't forget, we're also going to have a fib retracement. Okay, and this slide I did not update it. Give me about 20 seconds. I forgot to drop a slide in there, and this is going to be okay. Slide show from current slide. Okay, so we've got blue to blue, red to red, and we also are going to have a fib retracement. Remember, we're going to do blue dot high down to the low. The green are your retracements. So you're going to do a projection of that swing, a projection of that swing, and a retracement of this swing. That's going to start to stack the zone. We've got one, two, three four, five, six, seven levels within a zone that ranges from 2152 to 2157. You've got seven levels to say here's a five-point zone of resistance in the S&P. If you're a scalper and you want to take three, four, five shots, you know, want to be short, stop yourself out, short, stop yourself out, short, and get the move, fine. If you want to just short uh, spies and put a stop above, fine. If you want to be short and sell a call credit spread above, fine. You can trade this in any time frame you want. Okay, so this is what we're trying to do is identify areas of support and resistance ahead of time. Now, before I keep going, let's just do a couple examples. Okay, so let me get rid of the retracements we just did on TLT. What's the trend of TLT? Down, right? Okay. Do you see a prior blue dot to blue dot swing? Hell yes. I see two of them. So the way you do this is you go drawings, extensions, which you now know are projections. You click, let's do the most recent first, blue dot low to blue dot high. So you click once down here, you click a second time on this blue dot. And then look, this guy's just following me around. It's attached. Do you see the zero to 100%? It's 108, I can't move my cursor because it'll move, but all, all the way to the right, it's $118.12 to $119.49. That move right there, right, which is $1.37, is exactly equal to this distance. And I want to know where that comes in. 
100% try to hold, but we got up to 1272 and 1618 held. So I'm going to get rid of everything that didn't come into play, and I'm going to do this again. Blue dot to blue dot. and you're starting to build areas of resistance. And don't forget, we need to do our retracements. Retracements, blue dot high to blue dot low. I would say TLT is in a very good zone of resistance right here. I mean, if you want to be short, is it going to hold? I don't know. My stop goes just above outside of that fib resistance zone, and if I'm right, we should be able to retest the lows. So you'd risk 40 cents to make, you know, what, buck and a half, two bucks? Not bad. That's the way you trade. Um, I'll show you how to get the dots. Don't worry. All right, let me keep going. So um, this is what we're talking about, guys. We're trying to identify areas of support and resistance ahead of time around which we'll, we'll uh, execute the trades. Um, I like to say I don't, I never, almost, almost never put a trade on unless I knew I was going to do it at least three hours ahead of time. I've got my areas of support and resistance laid out. I know where I'm going to trade. The trading day is actually very boring for me. I do other things. I do all the analysis at night. I know where I want to trade. I know where my support and resistance is in the major markets. And when I get the alert and it goes into the zone, I'll, I'll stop screwing around on YouTube and building videos and come over and place a trade and then just go back to doing that. Most of the work is done outside of the trading hour, so it's not a full-time job. You can do this like an hour or two at night. Just come in you know, with the technology you guys have on your phones now. It's amazing you know, how you can trade and be effectively involved. So that's kind of the way I approach the markets. The zones are formed not just by retracements, but from projections, retracements, extensions, symmetry, so on and so forth. This is a trade. Speaking of YouTube, I put this trade on. Um, I just did this live. I'll go back. We've got areas of support. We've got areas of resistance, all derived from FIB. And if you're an options trader, this stuff is awesome because you can go, you go, okay, here's where the market should start and here's where it should stop. And if you're doing debit spreads, it's wonderful. If you're doing credit spreads, you know where to manage the trade. This trade I did live, this wound up actually being an iron condor, but I did it. Uh, with positive delta, those of you who are options traders. So I did a 28, 29 half. So I did a dollar and a half call credit spread, or put credit spread, and then I did a one dollar call credit spread. So that gives you positive delta. So I took in 78 cents, traded it live, executed, no problem. Alert went out to customers. I text message out every single trade that I offer, and I trade myself. And then this was kind of fun. The trade works. We go down, test the zone of support and resistance. And then we begin to move up. No big deal. Okay. Not every trade works. I get stopped out, and there's no problem if we get stopped out because the the stop is clearly defined. So this is kind of fun. Like, I I have a part time job. <laughs> um, this is a Friday afternoon. I drove up to the distillery. I'm a part owner in a in a craft spirits distillery. Kind of book profits. Um, and I'll tell you that about that in a second. But made a thousand bucks in that trade, no big deal. Um, and as soon as I was done, then I went to work on the still. We're doing vodka, we're doing um, rye and bourbon. Those of you who enjoy spirits, I'll tell you more about that in a second. Um, we do counter trend trades. As I mentioned, 80 to 90 percent of the trades you do should be in the direction of the trend. There are times where you want to go against the trend. Okay, GMCR. This is probably my favorite trade ever. All right, and this is kind of a fun story. If you guys remember Green Mountain Coffee, the stock went from 160 to 40, 30. It was getting killed. So I was like, all right. I found the area of support and resistance. Okay, we had a good fib zone down there. Those of you who are option traders might recognize this trade. I put on something that's a little aggressive. I really tried to swing for the fences in this one. I really like the zone of, of support. Earnings came out in GMCR. The earnings were a bomb yet the stock gapped up from FIB support. I was like, okay, interesting. So I did a bear call ladder, which is you sell a 52 half, 55 call spread, you take in that premium, and then you buy an out of the money uncovered call, you take in a credit of five cents. Again, if you're not an options trader, don't worry about this. You can trade this in Forex, futures, stocks, whatever. I like doing it in options. 
So this bear call ladder, if the stock goes down and the, the company goes out of business, you make five cents or five bucks a spread. If the stock goes up, you make money. If the stock goes sideways, you lose. So the worst thing that could happen is the stock goes sideways. When you get a test of FIP support and resistance like this, usually it just doesn't kind of languish. It, it, it goes up or it fails. So I put this trade on, stock gaps up. We, the stock got bought out. The move up from FIB support on bad earnings was a tell. We put the trade on. It kind of went crazy. The stock went up from 55 to 91 bucks. Like our uncovered calls that we bought for 85 cents went to $32. Um, it was great. I had all I had customers in. I had guys that like doubled and tripled their accounts overnight. Like it was awesome. Like that's the theme that you'll get from from Trade Thirsty here is we like to help and we like making money trading, but it's even better when our customers make money. I mean that nothing kind of warmed my heart, and that was a year ago. I'm still hanging on to it, but best trade of pretty much the best trade of my career, and that was great. But it was all from a counter trend fib support. So I was joking about the distillery. I took some of the profits. I took all of the profits from that trade and invested in the craft distillery, which well, I'm from upstate New York, Saratoga. So that's where it's located. My buddy's running it. So it's kind of fun, just kind of diversifying out of the market. And uh, there's actually a big boom in whiskey right now. I don't know if you know it, but American whiskey is taking market share from scotch. So it's in like a little crazy bull market. So I'm like, all right, let's just kind of get out of the stock market and kind of make something with your hands. It's pretty fun. So I go up there, I work, I get up in the still, like I get all dirty. It's, it's great. Anyways, um, and again, I'm sorry to be ignoring these questions. Let me just get through. I want to make sure I'm okay on time, and then as much time as I have, I'll answer everyone's questions. So, you know, what we're talking about here, guys, is is indicators for me. It, it always made me feel like I was on my back heels. Maybe I'm not using them right. I know I can learn something from Rob and, and Hubert and the rest of the guys, but for me, I'm kind of a like a hyper guy, as you can tell. I need to control myself and prevent myself from over trading. So the way I do that is by identifying areas of support and resistance ahead of time rather than just reacting to the market. I like to know where I'm going to trade ahead of time and that's how you keep those commission dollars down. As a retail trader guys, have you ever looked at your commissions? Like it's crazy what we pay. I used to trade for a hedge fund, like I used to trade on Goldman Sachs platform, on Lehman, Barclays, Deutsche. Um, we paid nothing as institutional traders. And trust me, I've traded with a lot of hedge fund guys and investment bank traders. Most of you guys are better traders than they are. But they do better because their costs are significantly lower. Okay? I, I know I, I know 50 retail traders that I put up against those guys any day of the week. But what gets in our way is the commissions we pay, whether you're trading futures or options. Like I'm up money this year, I'm up money last year. I lost 70% of my profits from commissions to think or swim. And I'm not even that active of a trader. Like it's crazy how much we pay. So my point is you have to trade less. You have to trade at perfect positions and if you get stopped that's fine. If you make money it should be relatively effortless but you've got to trade in frequently. You've got to keep your costs down. And the only way that I know to do that is by identifying areas of support and resistance ahead of time with FIB. So it's a trading game plan, and that's what I'm talking about. Keeps your costs down, keeps you out of your own way. Um, it's not a haphazard, you know, no stop loss, trading by the seat of your pants. Like, it's just not my style. I know myself, you know, and, and, and this is a process of discovery you'll have to go through. So game plan is enjoyable, it's comfortable, it's repeatable. It's about anticipating, right, as Tony Robbins says. So um, I think I have enough time. We can go through some more charts, but if you want to go, as I said, I have a course um, that I'm very, very proud to put in front of you. I worked really hard on this, um, so let me just introduce it to you. This is, and i got to switch off here. This is called the FIB Mastery. Let me go back here. Okay. This course right here, um, this is a product of about two years of in infrastructure build out. So I did the first ever like online live, like online high def green screen post production. Like I put a ton of work into this. So it's a course that will take you through 
all aspects of FIB. There's visuals, there's graphics flying at you, there's me talking to you, going through live examples. I built out like a studio in my basement just because, I don't know, like I said, I've got a lot of time during the day. I kind of set up my trades at night and I've I got some free time. <laughs> so I went a little crazy on this. So it's called the FIB Mastery Mentorship. It's been out for a little while and the feedback has been tremendous. Okay, so here's what's involved. We can finally clarify FIB analysis so you can predict price change rather than react. We have live mentoring and updates. Okay, so there's live trading in this, so you can see this working live in your account. I'm going to give you the indicators so you can identify the most powerful zones to predict price change. Resource center. You'll have everything set up the same way as me. Ongoing support, so you get all your questions answered via email, phones, webinars, interactive, on demand. Okay, now let me go back and let me show you one thing. I'm going to sweeten the deal here. Okay. Rather than just doing FIB, we have an add-on that's never been before released. It's called Power Waves. This is a proprietary indicator that doesn't exist anywhere in the world. Okay, they reinforce your FIB zones. Power Waves appear in your chart automatically and are updated in real time. They offer traders support and resistance levels to go long, etc. They're based on the major minor swings, blue and purple dots. So th this indicator, it will appear on your chart. The green levels are buy zones that automatically update, and they're based on proprietary calculations of the purple and blue swing waves. So if you're in an uptrend, green levels will appear on your chart. These are your buy zones. The thin green is your minor. The thick green is your major. The thin one is based on the purple dots. The thick one is based on the blue dots. Okay, in a downtrend, you're going to have a thin red and a thick red. These are your cell levels, okay, minor and major. So they're based on a certain look back period to find the major minor corrections. Okay, the minor power waves, as I said, are based on the minor swing waves. The majors are based on the major corrections. So they just appear in your charts automatically, and these are cell levels. So Russell, S&P, Q's. Bonds, gold, yen, they just appear. These are automatic levels. The idea here, guys, is do you see this thin red line right here and the thick red line? Remember this S&P futures example we went through? We had seven levels with FIB to sell, but you add the major power wave onto that right in the middle of the zone. This is the zone you want to be trading. Okay, I didn't mention it before. I was kind of building it up but you've got the thick red line right in the middle of fit resistance. This is where you want to be trading. And again, if you want to scalp it and you st it rob stochastic um, signal in the zone, great. If you want to use the cloud, Hubert's cloud against that zone, great. If you just want to sell it, put a stop, great. But this is how you identify the best zones of support and resistance. Okay, so that is an add-on to the course. Okay, so all of this is included in the course. You'll find out how to do the FIB support and resistance, my four favorite price tools of FIB. I also do my complete approach to time. Those of you who are options traders, this is wonderful for time. Trading rules, FIB tool ratio settings, uh, my complete approach to entries, exits, stops, take profits, the art of the trade, account risk and trade management. As I mentioned, I used to trade for a hedge fund. At one point, we had $100 million under management. Um, I've learned from some pretty good guys, from pretty good traders, and the kind of the, the risk management, the way you approach your, your trading account, how you allocate risk, how you position size, I'll teach you that in this course. Okay? A lot of people have said that the, the value of that course is right here. Okay? So basically stop you know, chasing lows, buying tops, trying to trade breakouts. I think those days are, are long gone. Also included in the course is live trading. So we have FIM principles that are taught, but then I go to work trading my live capital. As I said, I showed you my live trading accounts. I trade about four different accounts. Um, I walk it every single day. Love trading. So also included in this, you know, I'll take you through. I think there's probably 20 examples of live trades, and I just take you start to finish. Also included in this is an interview with um, two of the Fibonacci trading legends who have mentored me who have taught me how to do it, and I'm just simply carrying it on. So I didn't invent this. The guys have been doing this for three and four decades. 
they're winding it down. They love hanging in here and watching us and kind of guiding us along the way. I'm just simply handing it over to you. Okay, as a bonus, we did more live trading. There was three live sessions following the live trading that was, that's already packaged in the course. Once a week, I traded live, et cetera, et cetera. Feedback. I completed the FIB mastery course last week, probably the most comprehensive and easy to follow FIB instructional material I've ever seen. Combined with the power waves, it's now quick to set up FIB clusters with confidence. Thanks for taking your time. More great feedback. Great call. I love it. A lot of insight. I had my doubts earlier. You've cleared the confusion. Best explanation of Delta ever. Light bulb moment. Got it now. Awesome stuff. Really enjoying this. All unsolicited feedback. The indicators, power waves and swing waves, the dots and the lines, they're built for all the following, and they're all done now. I didn't update this presentation yet. These are all done, okay? So they're all ready to go on the major platforms. You can install per platform. If you have three different computers, you can, we give you a three uh, machine license, okay? So if you have Thinkorswim on three machines, you can install three times. If you have TradeStation on three, three machines, you can install three times. We have videos built out for them. So if you need help figuring out how to put the dots and the power waves inside of each platform, I've got videos recorded. Okay, so this is TLT. Here's the, the minor power wave. Here's the major power wave. And here's the dialog box on Thick or Swim. So 13.5 is your swing waves. These are your power waves right here. Okay, so it's all built into one indicator. All right. I sent out a survey monkey to everyone who's completed the course. I got a pretty high return. Here is the result of the quality of the course. How would you rate the quality of FIB Mastery? I got all very high quality. 60% of people replied very high, and then 40% high quality. How likely are you to refer to a friend? 64 out of 100. And you can go, it's actually 64 out of call it 200 because you can go negative. So I don't even know how you do that math. Most people refer to a friend. How would you rate the value of the money for FIB? Excellent to above average. How likely are you to purchase again from me? Extremely likely, very likely, somewhat likely. I have no negative feedback. Not one negative feedback on this course, I'm very proud to say. So here's the, here's the deal. The Fibonacci Mastery course, I could easily value that at 1618, which I'm sure you see the, the irony there, $1,600. The swing wave indicator valued at 297, power waves at 297. Three live trading sessions at 497. Um, I did a bonus scanning session with Huber. Okay, him and I traded live. We looked at combining FIB and the cloud. That's also included at 497. So altogether, this thing's worth over three Gs. Okay. I wouldn't charge three. That's a you know that's a pretty hefty chunk. I know a lot of guys are trading with with accounts that are not six figures, and some even not with five figures. Easily put this out at sixteen hundred dollars, no problem with that. Right now we're doing it at the one point two seven two extension. That's another Fibonacci number at twelve hundred and seventy two bucks. Okay, if you bought it off the website now, um, that's what you'd pay, and that's a completely fair price. We're doing the Black Friday special. So we took it from a 1272 external retracement, which we didn't get to talk about, down to a 38% retracement, down to $382 of Black, Black Friday, okay? Um, that's the lowest you're gonna see this for a long, long time, okay? Tradinganalysis.com forward slash black, all right? And let me just show you what the course looks like. All right, so this is how you get a hold of it. And we're only going to do 25 spots. Uh, we're going to shut this down in 24 hours. We're not going to deal with the customer support over the holiday weekend, so this will go, this will go in the next couple hours. Um, so that is, the, that is the offering. Now let me show you, pardon me, let me show you how to get into the course. Okay, so you're going to, when you purchase, you're going to get, an email with username and password. Okay, you're going to go up to tradinganalysis.com, that's my site. You're going to go to members area. And when you purchase, you're going to put your username and password in. You're going to hit login. 
it's probably going to take me to the back end of my website. Yeah, you won't see this. This is how you change my website. But you're going to go to the members area. Okay. And then it's going to be right here on the top row under educational courses. So here's the Fibonacci mastery. You're going to click this. And here's all the different modules. Now, at the end of each module, there's a quiz. Okay, you got you. It's not required. I try to make it required for you to pass on, but there's going to be a 10 to 20 question quiz at the end of each section to make sure you're grasping the material. So when you're done, you take the quiz, and if you get completion, it'll give you a grade. So this is just kind of a look at what the course looks like. There's going to be graphics flying at you. There's going to be me up on the screen and talking to you about different concepts. And there's your swing waves concept. I'm talking about live examples. So it was fun to make this. It's a lot of work, certainly above the normal um, education Todd, course. Plan. Todd, do you have a list of the uh, platforms that it works on? Yep. Yep. I'm getting yep. a, lot, a lot of questions like that. I see one question here. Um, I have Ninja and Toss. Do I have to buy two licenses? No, Jason, you don't. No. Um, it's on, it'll work on up to three platforms. So there's the platforms that Todd has it built for right now. Ameritrade, Thinkorswim, which is also Toss, TradeStation, Mode of Wave, MT4. Um, have you already got um, eSignal, Ninja, Sierra, and Infinity done? Sierra is the only one that is in production. Okay, so the only one that he doesn't have on the ones that say coming soon. So he's already got it for eSignal and the other one. So the only one he does not have is Sierra. No, 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 no. It's a, that was from his original uh Yeah, so I should have it. Sorry, he's taking care of it right now. Yep. Um, Ninja 8. I don't know Ninja 8. I think right now we still develop for Ninja 7. Do you have yours for Ninja 8? We do. Ninja okay. 7 and 8 is done. Okay, so yes, he does have it. So to be, to be clear, like if you when you buy... Todd's package, it'll work on up to three platforms. So if you're like me and Todd and you have half a dozen platforms, it's going to work on most of those, right? Um, if, if you have more than three, you can call and, and, and you'll, they'll, they'll charge you a small $97 fee to, to grab three more licenses. But most of you don't have more than three charting platforms like me and Todd. We have a ton, and, and, and Rob and all the rest of us, we have a bunch of different platforms. Most retail traders only have two or three charting platforms. So yeah. I'm going to hyperlink. Todd's link in there and turn it back to him and let him keep talking there. Cool. Um, thanks, Hubert. Uh, Carlos, if you have the prior FIB course that you, you know, it was just an online, you know, desktop recording, this is head and shoulders above. If you enjoyed that course, definitely get this. I'm very proud. And as I said, the feedback has been excellent. I really enjoyed making it. It was a ton of work, six months in production. So, um, if you've had a prior FIB course, you know, it's probably a couple hours just screen capture recording. This is the technology is light, light years above it. So, um, yes, absolutely get it. Okay, the feedback's been great. Really enjoy it. And this is everything I know about FIB. Um, black Friday special trade analysis.com forward slash black. And um, I am one minute. I'll take one minute. Anybody want me to look at symbols real quick? Any questions? If not, I'm going to be out of here and go back to the holiday and... Uh, Stuff like that. So, all right. Well, I did TLT. Um, ah, you know what, Hubert? I'm not, I'm not going to do it, guys. I'm not going to do it. We're on a tight schedule. We're going to keep the time. Um, but, guys, hope you take advantage of it. You have a great, great list of uh, presenters here. Um, you're going to have a lot of fun coming up here. Um, so, guys, enjoy it. Thanks for, uh, thanks for your attention. Hope you guys are having a wonderful holiday. And uh, be sure to, uh, to listen up. There's a lot of good content. Okay. Uh, you pay for the course, great. G13, man, you'll get an email with login and you can get started. But don't start the course until you're done listening to the team here. Uh, do we have Surge coming up next, Hubert?